we got some breaking news out of the NFL when it comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Chris Godwin. He's been ruled out for the year after an ACL injury from yesterday's game against the New Orleans Saints. Brutarian sharing that today with the media. The initial thought was an MCL sprain and he would maybe just miss the rest of the regular season and possibly return for the playoffs. That is no longer the case. You look at the numbers, Godwin was Brady's favorite target this season, leading up, of course, to week 15. Leads all the Buccaneers receivers with 127 targets, 98 catches. That's third in the NFL. Receiving yards per game, top 10 as well. Receiving touchdowns, 28th. By the way, had over 1,100 receiving yards. When you talk about a target and defending team losing maybe their number one wide receiver, uh, that's not good moving forward. All right, let's get that fantasy angle here. Dave Richard, the fantasy guru, and, and this is... Kind of bad. If you had Chris Godwin or your roster, or really bad, I like to say, uh, your initial reactions. We thought it was going to be an MCO, but now an ACO, which is worse. It's going to have implications that go into 2022 fantasy drafts, Brandon. It is very bad because we've come to love Chris Godwin as a PPR machine and someone who can step up and be Tom Brady's top target. You mentioned that. And now if he's not there, there's question marks all over this receiving core, but there's a hole in the middle of the field right now, just like there's probably a hole in Tom Brady's heart, that he doesn't have Godwin anymore. Fantasy managers do have to move on. We need to see what happens next with Mike Evans. If Evans' hamstring keeps him sidelined for a couple weeks, then Antonio Brown should come back and right away be a number one fantasy receiver as the top target for Tom Brady. We know Rob Gronkowski is going to get a lot of targets as well. But keep an eye on Tyler Johnson, the second-year receiver, who played 70% of the snaps in the second half of their game against New Orleans when Chris Godwin was out. 70% of those snaps, I should say, in the slot. So this is going to be the guy that works in the middle of the field replacing Godwin. And if we've seen anything from Tom Brady in his 20-plus years in the NFL, it's that he likes to work inside out with his wide receivers. He looks for those middle-of-the-field targets first. Tyler Johnson has a chance to help fantasy managers get some points back and maybe be a good number three receiver, if not a number two receiver, for the rest of the regular season. We would say, okay, with Godwin out, you could look at Mike Evans, but we don't know how long he's going to be on the shelf. Outside of a Tyler Johnson, are you looking at maybe a Scotty Miller? I mean, A.B. will be coming back. Where are you looking for those pass catchers? So let's just say that Mike Evans is out, and we know that Antonio Brown in that situation would absolutely be an outside wide receiver predominantly. Of course he's going to line up in the slot a little bit as well. But he would play a ton. Tyler Johnson would play a ton. And I think we'd see some sort of feeling out process between Scotty Miller and Brashad Perriman. They like Perriman. They know what he's capable of doing. He helped them win that game against Buffalo two weeks ago. And Scotty Miller, not really in 2021, but in 2020, had some amazing downfield plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We could see both of those guys mixing and matching as the number two slash three receiver. I'm saying two slash three because I'm not 100% sure about Tyler Johnson, but he's the one who's been playing in that slot role when Godwin hasn't been on the field. Now he's got a chance to be that just as he was in the second half against the game against New Orleans. I, I, I think that probably Miller's the one that fantasy managers will gravitate toward first. He's healthier than Perryman, but they should both get a look off the waiver wire. If we're not looking at the Bucs, uh, looking at their roster, you mentioned the early waiver wire, maybe some names. We're in the middle playoffs. Looking at this list, any names that might stick out to you? I mean, MVS is one for me. Uh, anybody else that might stick out to you that might be an option if you had Chris Godwin this season? You like MVS, I like MVS, but there's something special about ARSB. Amon Ross St. Brown in Detroit just continues to rack up targets and catches and making a couple of splash plays along the way, which is something that we didn't necessarily expect to see from him. He looks like he's turning into Jared Goff's top target here down the stretch. Absolute must-start receiver in PPR. All right, all right. Well, we'll that will We always have to download Fantasy Football Today. Download and listen the closer we get to Week 16. Plenty of days on the shelf. You might need to replace them as always. Jamie and the fellas, keep you locked in. Let's bring out Ryan Wilson with more on this and Ryan, your reaction. You talk about one of the top receivers on the Bucks roster now out for this season. We don't know his future there outside of this because he's a free agent, but hearing this news, what's your reaction? Well, it's awful news for Chris Godwin, uh, the individual who's playing on the franchise tag. Uh, you mentioned probably will be a free agent this year. Uh, and, and once this season is over, it's awful news for the Buccaneers, who have uh, suffered a string of injuries on both sides of the ball as they try uh, to maintain their hold near the top of the conference. They're probably going to win this division pretty easily. But you can see the hit, from, the hit, hit here from P.J. Williams went low on him, and he hyperextended his knee, and it's hard to watch. And it looked 
pretty clear to me that this wasn't going to be a short-term issue. It sounded like good news with the MCL initially, but uh, you see these sorts of injuries uh, almost every week in the NFL in terms of the hyperextensions. They typically lead to ACLs, and that, unfortunately, is where Chris Cowan finds himself. And that, unfortunately, is where this Buccaneers offense finds himself as well, where you mentioned just a moment ago that Mike Evans has a hamstring issue. I suppose the good news is Antonio Brown's coming back, and uh, there was some uncertainty about that. Uh, although Bruce Arians was, was quite frank when he said, look, we, we, need, we need some receivers. So Antonio Brown's uh, silliness aside, all the knuckleheaded stuff he's done, we're bringing him back because we, we're out of options here, and that appears to be what is going to happen. So other guys are going to have to step up. We heard Dave Richard talk about Rob Gronkowski, Tyler Johnson, the second player to Minnesota, who's been inconsistent at times, but that's what happens with these young receivers. Uh, and, and, of course, Leonard Fournette, who's the second leading receiver on this team, which is hard to wrap your head around when you have Mike Evans, of course, and, and also now Chris Godwin. Who's, who's done for the year. Ryan, if, if you're Bruce Arians and, and Byron Leftwich looking at this offense and, and Tom Brady, you're talking about some top targets here and Evan. Leonard Fournette, what would this offense look like moving forward as we get closer to the end of the regular season for you? Well, a couple things that you think about if you're a Buccaneers fan. Uh, Tom Brady... He knows how to win football games, Brandon. So the, being down uh, one of the best players won't necessarily doom their season. Uh, and also, don't forget, when he left New England, uh, he was mostly frustrated by the fact that he had no one to throw the ball to. Now, they've gotten a little better in that regard in New England. Uh, but he came to Tampa Bay with, with a plethora of riches in terms of, of receivers. So I think they'll do what they've always done. They'll lean on the short and intermediate passes. They'll lean on the running game. Leonard Fournette's uh, had sort of a resurgence in recent years in Tampa Bay once he bought into what Bruce wanted to do and help that team win the Super Bowl last year, and they'll take their occasional deep shot. They still have guys on this team that can run, starting with Antonio Brown. He's coming back. We know that Gronk can control the middle of the field. If Gio Bernard is able to get back at some point, and I'm, sure, I'm not sure what his health status is going to be, he also offers something of a receiver coming out of the backfield. Uh, so offense is a concern, obviously, because Chris Goblin's not going to be there, and Chris Goblin has his own issues in terms of what his future looks like in the NFL and how much he's going to get paid next year on his next deal. But I think the bigger issue for the Bucs Buccaneers is their defense, where they've had even more injuries and, and seem to be fighting off uh, the ability to keep guys on the field that are healthy. So, not a great situation to be in if you're the Buccaneers, other than the fact that they're 10-4, and four, top of their division, and, and still have a chance uh, to get right in the final three weeks of the season. You mentioned that they're 10-4, and four, but they are now behind the Packers with that loss, 9 nothing shut out there by the Saints. How's that kind of set them back from maybe the playoff pitcher into defending their title this year? Yeah, so the Packers are 11-3 as you sit here. They already have a playoff seed locked up. And here you see the, the, the rest of the schedule for the Buccaneers in regular season. That Panthers, that Jets, that, uh, at, and, and the Panthers finish it. That feels like three wins. Uh, that probably gets them to 13-4. and four. Uh, It may not be enough to catch Green Bay, and you may have to be okay with the idea of being a number two or number three or number four seed because you're battling, as you can see here, with the Cowboys and the Cardinals. You have the same record. And look, that's not the end of the world. We know the Buccaneers uh, found a way to get hot in the second half of last season, and, and I think the biggest issue for them, for them isn't where they're playing, Brandon. It's who's on the field and who's healthy. And uh, that's what they have to figure out as we move forward. All right, we'll see how that pans out moving forward. As you mentioned there, not, not the hardest schedule the rest of the way. By the way, appreciate that, Ryan. Don't forget, you can catch them on the Pick 6 podcast. The guys download and follow Bobby Emergency Pod with the Bucks and their situation with Chris Godwin. Download and follow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.